Hey everyone, I'm Brandon from Nagios and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going over how to add in your first initial host to Nagios XI. This will be a quick video, so let's just get started. Alright, so after you finish the installation process, you'll be met with this screen here. When you're doing the installation process, you should be creating a username and password. We're going to go ahead and add in those credentials right here. Now, to begin, we're going to add in a few couple hosts here. Uh, the first thing we're going to add in is a Linux machine. Uh, it's just a random one, nothing in it really. So the first thing we'll do is go off to the left-hand side here and hover over this gear and select Configuration Wizards. We can either scroll or use this wonderful search tool at the top, and we're going to just look for NCPA or the Nagios Cross-Platform Agent. We'll select NCPA. Again, we're just monitoring a random Linux machine here. Once we've selected NCPA, we're going to go ahead and throw in the IP address of that machine. The port we're using is 5693, so we can leave that there. When setting up NCPA, you'll be asked to enter in a token. You can have it be whatever you'd like it to be. By default, it is just simply my token, and I left it default. Finally, we'll select the operating system. This is an Ubuntu machine, so we'll select Ubuntu and click Next. For the host name, it can be whatever best suits your environment. I highly recommend that you make it a name that's clear, concise, so that when it goes down and you look at a notification, you're able to quickly identify what system is down so it can be resolved. So I'm going to just call this Linux Machine 1. And the things I'm going to be monitoring here are completely environment-based. This is just an example video, so I'm just going to go ahead and select a few random things to monitor. Please obviously select what you want to monitor for your environment. So in this video, we're only going to be monitoring CPU usage, uh, memory usage here. We're going to monitor all of these disk metrics here. And we'll leave the values here in the right default. I'm not going to monitor network interface metrics. But we are going to monitor the network manager service. Uh, if this is a service that we expect to be running at all times. We're going to want to make sure that the expected status is set to running. If this is a service that's supposed to be stopped at all times, we're going to want to flip it over to stop so that if it does start, we're notified of it. That's all we're going to do. We'll click next. Set your check-in intervals for whatever best suits your environment. For the sake of this example, we're going to just finish with defaults here. This is going to take a while to populate in Nagios XI, so in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and go back to the main interface here back to configuration wizards and we're going to monitor a website now. So we'll type in website here in this search tool. Select website. We're going to keep it basic and we're going to monitor nagios.com. Again with the host name, make sure it's a very quick and easy to read name so that you can quickly identify what is down. For our website, we're going to only monitor HTTP, ping, and DNS resolution. We won't monitor DNS IP match, but we'll also monitor the SSL certificate. And we'll leave this date here default. We'll click next and once again I'm going to leave this all as default so we'll click finish with defaults. Same thing as before we'll see here that the website is up and these services are just going to take a minute to populate. We're going to add in one more thing so going back over to the configuration wizards tab the final thing we're going to add in is just a generic network device. If you're monitoring more complex networking devices, we do have some other options for that. We have an SNMP trap, for example. For our network device, we're going to monitor a test switch. This switch here does not play much of a role in our environment. In fact, it's just for testing. So for our host name, we're just going to put in a test switch. And again, since this is a very generic network device, the ping is going to just be the only service we're able to actually monitor. We'll click Next, and since it is a switch, we're going to treat it as such, meaning it's probably a little bit more mission critical. So I'm going to make these values as if it were a device that we'd want to be notified of immediately. So I'm going to knock this 5 down to a 2, and this other 5 down to a 2 as well. It could be 1 for an immediate notification, we highly recommend putting two here just in case you get a false positive or the status flips and you're not notified of it and then by the time you get to it, it's already resolved itself. So we're going to put this as two. We'll click next and then we'll finish the rest of this as default here. Now that we're done, we can click this home button here at the top. 
We'll see that we do have one down device. It is this switch. It is actually not connected to our network right now. So this is good. We got that in there. And if we go to this up status right here, we'll see our other three hosts that we added in. Now I said three, we only did put in three hosts. You'll notice a fourth one right here. This is the local XI machine. It'll always be in here. Uh, so we just have our Linux machine right here at the top and now uh, yes.com right here as well. We can see that our services are populating now. We'll click the website, check our services. We're in the green here. And then again, the network switch that's in here that's currently not connected to the internet is down. And that wraps up today's video, folks. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any more questions, please visit support.nagios.com for more additional documentation. Also, be sure to stop by our YouTube channel for more amazing content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.